Hey, YouTube.org. I'm Jason DeWar from BakingStarWars.net, and uh, today we got a couple of Star Wars things and Indiana Jones things to try and hit. We'll see if the heat will let us. Uh, yesterday, we tried to do one of the videos. We couldn't do it because the computer couldn't handle it with the heat. It's just, it's just too hot. I don't know what to say. Just too hot in this world. But uh, the widescreen version of the Andor TV spot hit, and boy, does it look kind of cool. Pretty cool. Very cool, but uh, I'm going to play it right now. Let's see if we can do it. The Empire has been choking us so slowly. The time has come to force their hand. Yep. Andor. I need all the heroes I can get. You can't beat them. We need to pull together. At what cost? Everything! At what cost? You know they're coming. Go, go, go! So there you go. A couple of new shots. We got Saw Gerrera. And what cost? Everything. But I, I really want to know. At, at what cost? You know? So pr pretty cool on, on that front, though. I mean, it's uh, almost a new trailer in some ways. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if we get one more trailer and that stuff is, is in it. But I wanted to put that yesterday, and I just felt like I could play it today. And here we did it. We are we are getting somewhere. Hey Jedi Mike, how's it going? He says, Hell Lamb Head. How's it going, man? And hey, how's it going, Andy? Whoa, I like the avatar, Andy. Uh, how are you, dude? And then in a really strange and unexpected news, uh, you know, turn of events. I don't know what you want to call this, but uh John Williams was at the Hollywood Bowl, and Mangold was like, Hey, why don't you premiere? Helena's theme at the bowl last night. Man, of all the times I didn't go, you know, all the freaking times. But uh, so there were rumors about her having all kinds of different names. Obviously, none of those have panned out. Um, this ch channel, Charles Ozius, has shared the video. So make sure you uh, check the video out there if you want to listen to the theme some more times. But let's uh, let's uh, listen to it together. You know, I'm not scared. Are you? I don't think we'll get a takedown from a Hollywood bull bootleg. But if we do, I guess we do. Something you will treasure to see. And having a chat with our wonderful director, Jim Mangold. Fantastic man. And last week, as we record music, Jim said, Why don't you play it at the bowl next week? I said, Jim, the pictures are coming out the next year. That doesn't matter. Play it at the bowl. Pretty cool. That is pretty rad. So, here's Phoebe's theme. She's kind of, she's an adventurous. And she's also a fan of the towel. She did many, many things. And her music, she has a kind of lyrical music like an old movie song, which she looks like, except she's young and beautiful and wonderful. Here is Elena's theme for like six months to early. <laughs> My video's getting choppy, but the audio should be fine, I hope. But, uh, yeah, I called her a femme fatale. thought that was interesting, especially with the Velvet Underground stuff that was going on while he was writing it. Great Velvet Underground song if you're not familiar. If you're a youngin, or new to the rock and roll. Kind of reminds me of the tone poem music that we heard in the fan from the Phantom Menace stuff with like Anakin's theme a little bit. If you could ever go to the Hollywood Bowl, it's pretty fun. You could bring your own wine. So you'd be sloshed watching John Williams, you know? So, 
going to keep playing. Okay. this part. Reminds me of Temple of Doom a little bit too in, in moments. It's really good. Yeah. James says it's the best thing he's heard from Williams in a while, and I agree. Jeff thinks it's like a cross between Leia and Marion. And it definitely has that, like he mentions, old Hollywood sort of romanticism to it. Which Williams does really, really good. I think this kid might have a future. <laughs> it's not like overly heavy on the light motif, which is like the repetitious, you know, da dun 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 that kind of thing. So I think at first some people might be like, yeah, you know, it just sounds pretty. But they, but I think um, when you see the movie and we get to revisit her music more than once, I think it'll probably become more apparent that it's cool. I, I dig it though, for, for especially for an Indiana Jones movie because it sounds, doesn't necessarily sound like classical music at times. It sounds like, a, like he says, like old Hollywood. And then I thought it was interesting, or, or whatever you want to call it, uh, you know, movie star-ish. And um, the thing about, like, this movie is we don't really know what her relationship is to Indy, but we learned her name through this, which is interesting. Helena. I don't believe Helena was rumored in any of the, the things that we were hearing for names. Could be wrong, but I don't remember hearing that one. And um, so that definitely, um, I don't know if that throws, you know, some water on the fire of, remember the kid who they thought his name was Hynix or Jaime? Oh, thank, thanks. Thank you, Neil. Neil gave me the old super chat. I appreciate it, dude. Weekend bonus. Buy your computer a slurpee. Thanks for the show, right? Dude, last night was hell. I was just like trying to. I couldn't sleep. It was so freaking hot and terrible, you know? And, uh, but glad to wake up to a new John Williams theme. I honestly never expected in all of this time that I would ever hear the, a theme to the new Indiana Jones co-star before I've seen the trailer or heard the title, you know, that's pretty crazy. Kind of makes me wonder if it's because we're about to get some stuff at d23 next week we're like one week away from d23 i'll be there covering it so i'll be able to bring all of the info to you guys and stuff like that you know um and when i when i do obviously i have a feeling we're going to either hear some of this music in the trailer or there, there's going to be some big announcements for indiana jones at d23 because lucasfilm is going to be there there's no star wars film that is filmed and um Cassian is on the horizon. So there'll probably be something more for Cassian. Probably be like, they'll probably show the Mando stuff and the Ahsoka stuff from Celebration. 
that probably won't get released to the general internet or probably just like be in that room at that time. But I, I expect a new Willow trailer and I expect Indiana Jones five to have like a real, you know, early kind of, Hey, get excited for this. So we may get a title reveal and uh, you know, it's October. I think it comes out in July. Wait, did they move it up? They moved it, but we're less than a year away for like, what are, what are we like? eight nine months ten months away so um you know it's not out of the realm of possibility for a title i kind of think we are going to get one with with that first trailer and maybe this music is going to play in it so maybe you know mangle's like yeah go and go and do it you know and uh you know we don't know how many more shows john williams is going to be doing in his lifetime so he might have been like you know what play this one man like you know what i mean play it off but interesting that he calls her a femme fatale though right because doesn't that kind of, I mean, isn't it kind of, did you just talk about that she's hot? I, or or does he, does that mean, does the femme fatale trope mean some sort of like, she's going to eat you alive? She's going to get you. That's what the song told me, the femme fatale song, uh, the Velvet Underground song. And I remember Mangold talking about Velvet Underground when he was writing it because it takes place at that time. So when Nico and the Velvet Underground were recording, wonder if there will be any any little you know anything in the background or something. Will we see Lou Reed walk by? I don't know. But Indiana Jones and Lou Reed's what I wanted on the Young Indiana Jones Chronicles. Come on, George Lucas, get cooler, dude. I've heard strong rumors that she's the niece of Marcus Brody. That's been that was going around, and it started from a film blogger who said it and then didn't own it. So I don't know what to make of it. I'm. It wouldn't surprise me. But it also kind of seems a little bit unnecessary, like familial ties, just just to make them. Not sure if we need it. And then uh, the other question I have is like, you know, is there a chance that Marion's dead? Like, what if Marion died ten years ago? You know what I mean? Like, just got cancer. Not with, not with Indy anymore. Now he's just out, you know. I think he's going on one last adventure. He's going to get himself Phoebe Waller Bridge girlfriend. I don't know. But <clears throat> say what? Saturday show? Yeah, when John Williams puts out a theme song and we could get a TV spot to play. Oh, it's on, man. I can't help myself. I tried, but I can't. But howdy, Chris. Um, I have confidence that James Mangold will make a visually great film with some excellent action and so on. Looking forward to D23. Hope we get a few stills. I taught a real villain, maybe a teaser poster. Yeah, I want the trail. I'm hoping for the teaser trailer at that on that one, you know. Um, but the title will probably tell us more than anything, you would think. I mean, like Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, like when I was like a little kid and I heard that, I was like, Oh, it's Indiana Jones's last movie, it's his last adventure. That, that's how I took it because I didn't know what the crusades were, <laughs> and I didn't really know how to make that connection. Um, Temple of Doom, you couldn't really make anything from that Raiders of the Lost Ark, very telling what, what it is. And so I would have, I would like to imagine that whatever it is, uh, which sounds like it's time travel based, it'll probably connect. It'll probably, you know, be re revealing there. So I think once they go that route with a title and a trailer, I mean, the cat's basically out of the bag. And uh, we know her name now is Helena. So that's, you know, at least a development. I'm pretty excited. I mean, Indiana Jones, like for me, is it's up there with it's it's star. It's the it's the sister to Star Wars for me. Like as a kid, I was waiting for a new Star Wars. So I started following George Lucas stuff, obviously. And then I'm in the Lucasfilm fan club. And boy, did they do a good job uh, of getting me pumped for Last Crusade as a kid, you know, and Willow. So I've said it before, but it's just super strange that in, you know, this year and in, in, into next year, it's like Willow and Indiana Jones are back. But I dig it. That alongside loving how Andor is looking, too. So I think it's going to be pretty cool, you know, year for Lucasfilm. The next, you know, 12 months for Lucasfilm are going to be good. I think we're going to get a good variety of stuff. And what i'm hoping the fandom takes away from all of it in the big picture is um enjoy it don't take it all so seriously 
I don't mean don't be critical. I'm not saying that, but it's like uh, when you look at like what we have on the plate from Lucasfilm right now, if something is tonally not your cup of tea or not your favorite thing tonally, there's just going to be something else that's going to have a different tone. So it's sort of like, you know, when you're into a, a band and, you know, they do a real hard ride, like, like, like if it, I'll just use Queen, you're into Queen, you're like, oh, fuck, man, Stone Cold crazy. That's where I'm at. But, you know, then they put out Love of My Life and you're like, you know what? I like some Love of My Life, too. Uh, I could like different tones and things. And Star Wars is that way, I think, anyways. At least it is for me. So, but I'm I'm with you, dude, about, about Mangold. I'm, you know, if you asked me two years ago, do I want anybody but Steven Spielberg to direct this? I would have said no. Because I believe in Steven Spielberg. I have every reason to. But the problems that I do have with Indiana Jones 4, which I, I honestly mostly like overall, like it's, it's not perfect, but I mostly like it. Like I'm a fan of the movie. I own the movie. I watch the movie, but it's, you could just tell that Spielberg has Spielberg has his, he's not entirely in, in it anymore. And so that's ultimately what I'm super excited about is that I think we have a director who, is probably really into it is happy to join this like team and take a swing you know and that's that's the most important thing for me is that the person who makes the movie is is really in it and um didn't get a lot of deep spoilers on it the crew was willing to talk to me about sets and stuff but they they wouldn't go they were like oh, i think they like mangold too much which is good it's a good sign it really is that that said, uh, I, I I'm with you guys. I think he's gonna make an. A, I think he's gonna do the the gags, the action set pieces, really, really, really well. So, um, hello there. Any, hey, how's it going, Salvador? Uh, anything about a new Star Wars movie in production? It's is real. The rumor. So once again, dude, we have to we have to acknowledge that it the very the fact that it this rumor would come about without any specific really random weird details about a specific person just some thing to anchor it down it's that d23 is one week away is there a good chance that they're going to announce a new star wars film that we've never heard of and that it's probably going to come out before taika's i think so that's just a bet it's just a hunch it's not it's not um any inside stuff on my part you know always be honest with you guys i i don't want to i don't like to play that like Oh, guys, I, I know something. Jason knows something. I'm not going to tell you, but, oh, man, hold on to your butts. Like, that. that's bullshit. And uh, so I don't do that. But the internet does. And uh, it's it's just kind of basic fan math. So, like, for instance, let's just say we didn't know that this would be Indiana Jones 5. And they said, hey, they're going to announce a new fucking Indiana Jones movie and Mangold's involved. James Mangold's in it. James, James Mangold's doing it. Then you're like, oh shit, there's like something real to that. Otherwise, it's people posturing to pretend. Like a lot of a lot of like leakers that are um the, the fakers, they like to go and tack on. You know, Bespin Bulletin goes, Oh, they're filming this here. Retweet, yep. It's like I knew it the whole time. Fuck that. If you didn't know it, fuck off. You didn't share it before. And then if you don't have any, any specific details it's trash it's it's it goes nowhere it means nothing it's like posturing so uh in my opinion though there will likely be a star wars movie announced a new one and kathleen kennedy said before star wars celebration was it a vanity fair where are you at bespin bespin always reminds me of this one bespin reminded me of this one a few times she said that they were ready to announce some new filmmakers that were involved and in, in new films that were going to be coming out they were just kind of like, you know, finalizing it and getting ready to announce. And we thought, well, maybe it's going to be at celebration. That came and went, didn't happen. Maybe the deal fell through. Maybe, maybe none of it came to fruition. Or maybe they just decided to sign, keep it under wraps, and release it at D23. So that's why I do think that there is a Kathleen Kennedy quote to at least ground this in, in the realm of, of possible. Of this, but the potential is there. And um, the Taika movie coming when it is supposed to come never made sense. 
it has never made sense to where they're like covering for the rogue squadron thing and maybe they're gonna maybe they're gonna re-announce rogue squadron i mean that's something that we should be potentially you know aware of i mean there's always a chance that like patty jenkins is going to step away or just become a producer on it maybe a name only maybe really and that they're going to give it to somebody else if she can't make you know a reasonable timeline but we are kind of hitting a point here where the ball needs to get rolling on movies hollywood's pretty much back you know top gun fucking owned hollywood this year and boy, if there had been a good Star Wars movie, I don't know if it would have beat Top Gun necessarily because it was sort of a phenomenon. But there's a lot of money to be made, a lot of money being left on the table right now. And they can't be happy about the fact that they haven't been able to execute on it. I mean, the plan was to take an extended break. So it's fans are impatient and then they think it amounts to incompetence. But it actually, I think it comes down to making a competent Star Wars film. And I'm excited for the Taika movie. I'm a big fan of his. But I also don't really think it's the best first film if it's overly comedic. And like, and, and I, I don't want to see a Taika movie that, that fucking holds back, you know, on its comedy, if it's, if it's funny. You know, I don't want a cinema verite like, oh, this is a Star Wars spoof or anything like that. But, you know, I want him to lean into the eccentricities of the universe the way that he can. Um, but at the same time, he did, you know, the, that the Mando finale of season one is fucking perfect almost. And it wasn't overly, you know, comedic or anything like that. So who knows? Who knows what to expect? It just depends on what sort of which way the pendulum swings. King Chris says not everything is going to hit perfect, but let's enjoy it. I have a I have a good feeling we have some great stuff coming. Don't let the haters sway you. Yeah, exactly. Don't even don't let me being negative or positive sway you, you know, think for yourself. That's what I say. Like Obi-Wan Kenobi, is it the best looking Star Wars thing to ever come out? It's not. Does that story really work for me? Yeah. Does my partner always say if it wasn't Star Wars you wouldn't care? Uh yeah, but he's wrong. <laughs> he's wrong. I would. I mean, just like uh I like Green Knight story reminds me a lot of green knight in a different way but it's coming at the same things from from the from the same place a very honorable person or a person striving for honor who is trying to like you know climb out of the hole so to speak and uh get to where they should be as a warrior it's a fun story i i'm a fan of that of that particular story and uh so so kenobi it works for me you know i watch it all the time I, I, I got to be honest. Do I think uh, it was better made than Mandalorian? No, I don't. But I do prefer it more. I have watched it more than I watched it, watched The Mandalorian. And that's just me, though. You know, that's just like, I don't know. It's kind of weird. It's like whenever any of these things come out, something that I love so much, which is Star Wars, Indiana Jones and all that, it's like, okay, I live with this now. This is in my repertoire of entertainment of of you know escapism from the horrid reality that we live in this heat but so i'm glad like kenobi exists you know and uh i think uh you know pretty good chance that it, they're going to do another one though too and i keep wondering if that's going to going to get announced um my what do you want to call them let's just say people i've talked to at disney they fucking want it like they want it they want it yesterday and uh so i wouldn't be surprised if they announced the intent the intent to develop kenobi 2 is my is my guess but um but yeah but like like king chris like king chris says not everything is going to hit perfect and um that's just kind of like with this never ending you know star wars and indiana jones stuff hitting and that kind of jazz not everything is going to hit perfect and you just got to kind of like roll with it and just enjoy it for what it is. And then, you know, if it's truly trash, you just won't remember it in a few years. It'll just fall off. It'll just be buried and you won't be something that you consider, but you know, have fun if you can. Salvador says, I really like the Kenobi movie version. I don't remember how many times I revisited the movie. Yeah, there was, um, I, I think the guy did a wonderful job. So I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I don't mean to like criticize it in a way where I'm like negative about it. Some of those like 
some of those like CGI tracking shots that he used to connect them, I think were a bit overdone for it because they felt grander than what you know you kind of get. So than the quiet kind of series that it, that it is. But um, I do wish it. I do wish that uh, that had just been a, a like a really long movie in certain ways too. And if they had done a movie cut and released it in the theater, boy, that would have been fun fun to go see. You know. I'm jealous of those Lord of the Rings cats that got to go and see Lord of the Rings this last week, this couple day, couple nights ago, part one and part two in the theater, you know, and uh, kind of wish I went to it, to be honest, a little bit, I'm kind of mixed on it. But yeah, I'm taking the, the kids to see that last Spider-Man movie we never saw tonight at the at the theater. Today's National Cinema Day or International Cinema Day or something like that. So uh, tickets are three bucks everywhere. Um, in the U.S. anyways. I don't know about the rest of the world, but if you're in the U.S., three bucks. Not not too bad for, you know. I You can see Jaws 3D right now for three bucks. I really wanted to go see it, but I don't know if my kids would enjoy it. They like Jaws, but I don't know if they could handle it. So I was like, you know what? Let's just, let's just play it safe. Uh, Neil says, kind of thought we'd see more people doing Kenobi cuts. First one didn't do it for me. Preferred the show even with its flaws. Yeah, I, I'm I'm a bigger fan of the of the show than the um than the movie cut too, but you know I, I don't wouldn't I don't think there's a a right way to enjoy it. However you enjoy it, it's fine. That's what I say. Um, James said, "Did you like Rings of Power?" So Rings of Power for me, watching part one and part two together, tried my patience a little bit with time. I started to get like I am done watching fantasy stuff right now. I wanted to go do something else, but I thought it was really good. Whenever it started to get too boring, it moved on like it. And that was the one thing like uh, house of dragons has so few characters rings of power has so many. So by the time I started to get bored, we kind of just moved on and would jump ship, go somewhere else. And I was like, okay, cool. So, so I was, I was kind of into it and uh, I'm not a big Lord of the Rings fan. Um, I understand how people connect with books. Like I'm a big Anne Rice fan. Oh boy, is that shit making me mad right now? But I understand how people connect with books and then enjoy a movie that relates to it. So I was never one of those people. And uh, I enjoyed Rings of Power more than Lord of the Rings, the movies. I, that's probably sacrilegious to some, but it's the truth. I'm just telling you the, the truth. And uh, But it was also, I am curious. I don't know if I would watch it again. It would be it can get a little bit boring. At times, I think there was stuff that wasn't for me that was for like really hardcore Tolkien people and th- and I didn't care. And so, you know, it had its moments, though. There was stuff I liked, you know, like the stuff with that sword. Is that is that weirdo that that looks like Larry David? Is that like Larry David looking Gandalf, dude? Is that like Sauron or whatever? Like like lost his memory, like the guy in Indiana Jones 4? I don't even know what's going on though. I'm fucking lost, which is probably why I'm enjoying it. I do like it when I'm kind of lost in in a story. But anyways, um, yeah, we got some new Indiana, new Indiana Jones music. Got a new little Andor 30 second TV spot. You know, I'm gonna put that that Andor spot on one more time and see if we can do it because I want to see it one more time. Here we go. The Empire has been choking us so slowly. The time has come to force their hand. Andor. I need all the heroes I can get. You can't beat them. We need to pull together. At what cost? Everything! I love God so much. You know they're coming. Go! 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 Star Wars. So we got, we got there at the end, we got that prison break, too. You know, with the with the barefoot guys. And, uh, you know, I, I had somebody um, write me and say, like, go like, uh, oh, yeah, like they're making something like gift gas. And I was like, hmm, so somebody else who I know was in the production told me that they were making Death Star parts, though. We'll see. But anyways, uh, yeah, it does. It does. It, lo- it looks really good, man. I'm into it, Brett. And. Star Wars fans always look at things, in my opinion, like, you know, in the binary, like 
this is right, this is wrong. There's Coke, there's Pepsi. You know what I mean? And it's just, um, you know, like Kenobi should have been done like that and or should have been done like that. And it's just like, uh, you know, I, I, I dig the fact that it they did Kenobi that way and that they're doing Andor this way. Like, I like that. I'm getting like that, that, that difference. And um, my only criticism, real, real stronger to criticism right now is, like I said before, just stop fucking titling shit after character names, though. You know, it's just not the best way way to do this. It's like it's a marketing thing, and I get it, but that marketing won't doesn't matter at a certain point. Like when this shit just exists forever, so, you know what I mean? Like, is the show Andor? I don't know if you do two episodes, three episodes about Mon Mothma. At that point, it's not really his show anymore. And um, but they're just so into oh, we name all of our stuff after a character. Just don't don't think that's a good idea but i'm excited i'm kind of uh really hope the time goes fast because i really want to get into watching this and discussing what it all means with you guys and stuff like that and um you know we got d23 next week and then we're after that we're about two weeks away from it so uh not far so it should be should be cool we are in for a fun month it's been a bit quiet I understand why you know especially like we're coming down off of kenobi and then it's been really quiet and uh oh yeah one last thing just just uh fucking do it like this is this is the stupid shit i have to deal with all the time this fucking asshole right here like this guy look at this guy well surely star wars and disney need to target jason ward for making star wars to basically leak the whole series before it was released and it's just like like this guy fucking woke up and decided like i have to go after him like what the fuck is your problem like like who's not sucking your dick can you not suck your own dick like what is your problem you know what i mean you need to work that out buddy but now he's going around going around like on twitter and he's like Ugh, Jason Ward blocked me because I had stuff on him. He ain't got shit on me. And if you do, put it out. I don't give a fuck. But that said, uh, fuck that guy. Fuck Star Wars wheelhouse. And uh I'm gonna keep on doing what I'm doing. And um, the greater point was Fulcrum leaks did not get taken down by Lucasfilm. Do you think making Star Wars and Bespin Bulletin could exist? If they were that vigilant about going after people, do you really think so? After 10 years of the shit that it, I have put out and those guys did a, a, a Yaddle clip and then talked about concept art. It's like, use your fucking heads. They, I talked to those guys there was just too much heat around all the shit. They just walked away. It's like that simple. It's not a conspiracy. It's just they were smart. You know, they were like, we're just not going to fucking deal with this. We're not going to jeopardize our sources. We're not going to, you know what I mean, deal with the ire of Lucasfilm. And we're just going to get out. And I was like, if that's what you guys want to do, that's what you guys should do. They're like, yeah. They're like, we, we deleted our socials. I was like, all right. And then they're like, you know, then there's like, you know what? We're just going to delete, delete, delete the site too. All right. And then they did. And they, they walked away. And like, like it's not a grand conspiracy. The guy even came out. N Naruto even came out and, and like did a tweet to like clarify it. But they don't care. Star Wars leaks doesn't change the uh, title of that post. They want to make it seem like it's something that it's not. I, I don't understand why these people are so fucking crazy. It just drives me up the wall with how stupid they are. You know what I mean? It's like Give me a fucking break. If you don't like what I do, don't fucking follow me. If you don't like, uh, if you, if you, if Fulcrum Leaks wants to quit, it's because they want to quit. Nobody's going to make them quit. They didn't sign an NDA with Lucasfilm. That's not how this works. You know what I mean? Yeah. Jason Ward villain arc. It's like, oh, this Ward's a villain and I'm a hero. It's like, you're the, you're the kind of person who's like, they should target people. If you've ever in your life said somebody should be targeted for something, you're probably the bad guy. Think about that. You know what I mean? It's like, it's crazy. Fucking weirdos. 
Uh, that said, I think we've done this mini show today. Hope everybody's staying cool if you're in the hot, hot parts of the world like I am. And uh, have a good weekend. And uh, we're going to get ready to cover D23 and have a pretty good time there. And um, hopefully we'll have some big Star Wars news within about a week from today, about this point from one week from now. So uh, make sure you hang out with us this week as we cover what's supposed to be coming. Um, keep your thinking caps on when you start to hear rumors because just a, a rumor with, with no anchor, I, what I call an anchor, that's something to weigh it down so it doesn't blow away. If it doesn't have one, don't, don't fucking trust it. It's probably bullshit. And, uh, but I do, I mean, I'm expecting a lot of cool stuff. And, uh, so anyways, see everybody in uh, about two days on Monday morning. I'll be back unless some new TV spots hit or something like that. In which case I will be back. And, uh, yeah. So thank you to everyone for supporting the channel, liking the video, like it played to the end and all that, that kind of jazz. I appreciate it. And, uh, be cool. Bye. It's the end of the show. Come on, let's go. It's the end of the show. Come on, let's go. Hey! It's the end of the show. Come on, let's go. Hey! You know you should go. Come on, let's go. It's not about spaceships.